145. I am your host, Nomar Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Hey everyone! Feliz Navidad, guys! Hello, James. How are you doing, man? Uh, getting better, actually. Oh, that's cool, that's I'm, cool. L- like I may have said in the past, maybe my future self is going to be listening to this and, you know, oh, come on, you were feeling terrible back then, but now you're feeling great. Well, future self, listen to your past self, which is... Oh, no, this is confusing. This is going to be... Is this going to be a past self, present self, and future self, and then involving ghosts in between them all? It's my ghost of Christmas past. Oh, God, no. But anywho, moving along, we have Rom. Hello, all you happy people. Hello, Rom. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, Norman. Yo, ho, ho, in a bottle of... Oh, wait, wrong song. (laughs) Wrong season, my friend. Wrong season, my friend. So, how are you doing? Yeah, slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Also joining us, rarely, is Silverquill. Last night, I was haunted by the ghosts of three pony spirits. Oh, God. Do we even want to know who they were? Yes, you do. Oh, God. Who then? The first was the ghost of Pony's past and was named Firefly. Oh, not that bad. But she wasn't from James Cameron, so I dismissed her. (laughs) (laughs) All right. The second was this cross-eyed mare who just smiled a lot but wasn't allowed to talk anymore. And the ghost of Pony's future said he was from Philly Fantasia. And I was like, the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no, wrong IP. But hey, welcome there, Silver. Happy holidays. And to you guys. Thank you. It's rare for you to come here, but since this is episode 45 in a Christmas special, so why not, right? It's what, um, two days before Christmas? So, yay. Yay. And our kind of special guest for this week. Some may know her as the lovable Puffy, but I know her as Puffy. Hello there, Puffy. Hello. <laughs> I'm trying to hold my laughter back. Uh, don't hold uh... it. Just just let it go. Just let it go. Oh, no, don't start. <laughs> let, let, let's not go to Frozen. I know hey, it's you're... Frozen outside, but you know... Let go of it. <laughs> You're the one that started it. It's weird when a Disney movie can totally ruin a sentence. Oh, yep. <laughs> yep. Do you want to do a podcast? It doesn't have to be it a long be a one. Pony. It doesn't need to be about ponies. <laughs> oh, that's oh, you, you know okay, what to do. Bye. Okay. But anywho, so Puffy, before we carry on with the show, mind answering the four important questions. And, well, question number one is going to be favorite character. Well, has to be Rarity and Discord because, you know, I blame James. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. Thank you. I love you. All right. Aww. <laughs> um, episode. Uh, definitely Three's a Crowd. Also because I blame James. Three's a Crowd? <laughs> Three's a Crowd is Sean, right? Um, is the episode where there was blue flu and uh, oh, just looked... yeah, that a one. little glass of water, please? Oh, that one, that, yes. that one was fun. That one was fun. And oh. silly enough, it's actually because James said only two sentences that actually were about Discord's character, and it made me real uh, reanalyze uh, the episode, mm-hmm. which was literally the last and my most <laughs> hatred episode ever. I it's hate just... it. I hated it with anger. Oh, my God. And what did I say to make you change your mind? I didn't know that I could, bl- that I could like, mind wash people, <laughs> brainwash people. Um, it's actually, uh, it was two small sentences that you said in your Discord stream. Um, the Discord is chaotic from outside, so he doesn't need to be... Uh, chaotic on inside like in his brain mm. and uh, the second thing was that discord can never be out of character all right wow. I don't just because you're a bad that. guy doesn't mean you're a bad guy, <laughs> bad guy. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> so how do you become a fan of the show i tried to make it shorter because you know like, <laughs> i i it would have taken mm. like ages after Christmas for me to finish my story. <laughs> you have time. Fine. Oh. Um, <laughs> it was on September of 2012. Um, silly enough, I actually uh, found it on YouTube because for three... That's not a 
word? Yeah. <coughs> wow, that's wow. a word. Wow. <laughs> Funny, first F bomb of this of the podcast, and I don't have to drop it. It's just my job. I'm I know. I'm gonna go. Down. Drop those sick F beats. <laughs> You're welcome. Wow. All right. <laughs> um. I was 12, and it, uh, and after like three hours I, of watching literally crap that didn't interest me at all on YouTube, mm-hmm. I found My Little Pony on the recommended list, and um, I was like, okay, why not watch this? I played with the toys when I was seven, so it's not that far away. So when I when I played the the video, I, I instantly noticed those weren't ponies that I kn- uh, that I knew, and. Uh, I was like, oh, that's a good episode. Let's watch the next one. It was good. So and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and then you hooked. No, no, Norman, I didn't start with the first one, so mm-hmm. I needed to actually go uh, in the middle of the night, mm-hmm. uh, at, at, the, at the same day. I went under my blanket <laughs> and he- took my headphones and watched the entire season one uh, from start to begin, uh, f- I mean, from beginning to the uh, to the end. Uh and I loved it. I loved it so much. Talk and then came the second season. And then uh, I stopped at season three, episode three. All right. Talk about dedication. So wow. what do your family and friends think about your love for said show? Well, uh, my mom thinks I'm too old for, for that now. Because, you know, I started watching it when I was 12. Mm-hmm. Basically two years ago around. Mm-hmm. And now I'm 15. And she's like, dude, you're too old for this. Never. <laughs> uh, my brother actually teases me for it. Uh, he's like, "Yeah, my brother watches ponies. He only draws ponies." Ha, 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 but ha. you're a girl, so that's kind of. No, yeah. I'm a penguin. Done. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, wow. Okay. But then <laughs> uh, well, thank you for for answering. Are you for... boys by? Uh, are you boys by, Sh- by uh, Elijah Wood? <laughs> I love you in the. I love you in Lord of the Rings. Oh, <laughs> uh, but any? No, 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 no. I'm the dragon sitting right next to her on the, her lap, and I'm, and I'm like, I'm secretly a penguin. I'm secretly a penguin. Oh god. <laughs> the but penguin any? from Batman or the penguin from Mr. Popper's Penguins? Penguins. Uh, <laughs> penguin. <laughs> <laughs> but any? Uh, yes, we made a new year reference in the show. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Buffy, you don't need to answer that one. But anyway, thank you, Buffy, for answering all the questions. And anywho, the reason why we're all here is because of one devoted and vocal fan, which is Buffy. She oh God. <laughs> brought us here together so we could make everyone happy, like how we do for her on normal occasions. So, Buffy, mind telling us why did you brought us here? <laughs> Uh, well, stuff happened, things happened, and uh, I noticed that it's uh, that on twenty third, uh, the next uh, the, this episode is actually going to come out, and I'm like, Norman, why not make an episode? Why not? Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's a day before Christmas, and I wanted uh, people to feel the happiness of Christmas and uh, get in the mood. And be like, yeah, it's Christmas. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, being the one guy who doesn't really understand the whole holiday, who wants to take this one up and talk about what is this holiday about? Not me. <laughs> uh, Silver? Rom? James? Anyone? <laughs> I'm just here for the food. <laughs> it's Jesus Christ's birthday, man. Really? Yes. Well, well not really, really, but... Yeah, but yeah, officially kind by all really, papers. Right? It's, isn't it like when the, the oh look? Basically, the Christians excel at online piracy before there was an internet. <laughs> uh, yeah, we sort of <laughs> long. Okay, the historical meaning is that there was the winter solstice, with uh-huh. longest night of the year. Every, after that, everything gets brighter. Everything gets a little warmer. You you gear up for the the summer harvest. So to celebrate this transition, there was this, uh, a solstice feast. Fast forward a couple centuries, well, you still want to have a cel- reason to celebrate, but you also want to add a little bit of the Holy of Holies. Mm-hmm. So uh, Christianity kind of adopted December 25th as 
a day to celebrate the birth of Christ. Mm-hmm. And depending on which cu- culture you go to, sometimes the religion, I think in Japan, it's more about just, just gift giving because a majority of the populace is not Christian, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. they're、uh, Shinto Buddhists, if I remember right. And then somewhere in the audience, there's a person going, Oh, the heathens. <laughs> <laughs> And he has to be a leprechaun. <laughs> oh, faith of me, Gora. <laughs> But so,、uh, basically, it's just.、Uh, Oh, what can I say? It's just, it's a holiday to celebrate giving to others. And though it's also nice to get something、uh, you really enjoy, ha- really half the, half the point of gift giving is seeing someone else happy. That is true. That is true. So, James, what's from your point of view? How does it look like? In my house, at least, from,、uh, mm-hmm. from a very tiny perspective, we、uh, don't gather the entire family. Like, from, from what I. No, and this is all I take from movies and TV shows. In、uh, places like America, it's a massive gathering of like, family members, and then you get to see people that you only see once a year. You see your grandparents, you see your uncles, your,、uh, your cousins, you see everybody. And it's, it's a massive gathering, and people get together and they're happy. They sing,、uh, they sing Christmas carols, all that.、Uh, from my tiny place in the world, this, this little corner in Spain, Uh, we don't sing that many Christmas carols and、mm-hmm. we don't gather the, the entire family. Like, we spend the holidays, my parents, my sister, and myself, and that's about it.、Uh, it doesn't go beyond that. And to be perfectly honest, it,、uh, it's not so bad. Sometimes it's good to have a tiny, small uh, celebration uh, because it's not to gather with a lot of people, it's to gather with all the people that you really care for. And、uh, the fact that we only have like, The four of us, we, we have each other. That doesn't mean we don't care for other people, but it's like it's the only thing that we can afford to do in the holidays. Like, if we wanted to gather everybody up, sure, that, that, that will put us into back- bankruptcy again. <laughs> Remember, the stupid goddamn recession taking the enjoyment out of everything, but we make the best out of it. So, all right, that's cool, that's cool. And, Rom, what about you?、Uh, what about me? Well, what do you do for this season? Oh, we just, you know, gather who we can, have a dinner. You know, we, we, we celebrate really humbly, really humbly. Even though we didn't have that much of a recession here, but still, yeah. Before,、mm. In the past, we did gather entire families, but then in recent years, things got really, really busy. Really busy. Well, you know, one of the reasons why you guys don't have recession is because you have a surplus of potatoes. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. That's the, true. World, the world needs potatoes. If、exactly. Without potatoes, yeah. I read like, the recent news. Somewhere on the west coast of America, they're having French fry issues. Oh, God. There's a shortage <laughs> of potatoes because the port is on a strike or something.、Oh、God. I'm going to、no. believe you. <laughs>、so yeah, we're going to send、oh、them、God. some you know, food aid or whatever you call it. Oh, God. All in favor, say our aye. Aye. Aye.、Uh, but. It is the season. It is the season. It's so, the season to be happy. It's the season、mm-hmm. to be good with each other. Yes. Yeah, and it's and the season to watch holiday movies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And for us here on the NBA Show crew, we, we just want to hang around. Like, we all love each other. Like, in a platonic way, by the way.、Um, Strictly platonic. <laughs> I don't love you. I love potatoes. Oh, you. But anywho,、um, we here just want to spread the cheer, just want to make everyone happy and whatnot. And. Some people may be up at this ungodly hour, and some people may be sleep deprived and whatnot, and some people are just cranky because of time zone differences, and I am one of them. But we just try to make everyone happy. Norman, you're cranky all the time, it doesn't count. <laughs> yes. But anywho. Hi.、Yeah, Uh, but, but anywho, so obvious question from me because I don't really celebrate the holidays or, or this holiday is、uh, what do you guys do during this? Um, season because from what I learned on the internet, don't believe whatever you read or see. So, what do you guys really do besides、um, gathering around and eating food? I don't know because you know I live in a, another potato country. <laughs> all right. We kind of celebrate it with also the, the Christmas that everyone knows from TV. <laughs> and、uh, actually, the Christmas、uh, that our ancestors、uh, did, like playing old games、oh. or、um, eating a traditional food of,、uh, of our country. And being there for the family、uh, is the most important thing, you know, because, you know, it's, it's family. 
And it's now that <laughs> some of you don't have. I'm so hey. sorry for you. Not even I have snow. So, Silver, would you agree on this? Well, we all have our we all have our own traditions. I mean, uh, I myself, I put on my Santa hat, take off everything else. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. No, no. Phil? I have a very imaginative mind. You shouldn't say things. Oh, no, I wonder where you have to on. Put this. I wonder now where you put the Santa hat. <laughs> <laughs> then, I, then I fill my bathtub with eggnog and vodka. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yes. And I take the most depraved bath you shall ever imagine. <laughs> Just <Whoa>. for kids. <laughs> Thank Whoa. you, Silver, for, for telling hey. me this. I needed to know this information as a oh. child. Can I do know? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> My the those images are now beating the sugar plums right out of your head. <laughs> Canon. <laughs> Canon. This went from a G to an R rating. Oh god. <laughs> wow. That, that was that was extreme. So, oh but... yes, right. Extreme celebrations. <laughs> oh. Okay, oh. but <laughs> you guys are wonderful. But in semi-actuality, as in <laughs> total actuality, uh, I get together with my family. We have this wonderful breakfast where uh, my dad makes uh, some of the best waffles you've ever seen and tasted. Uh, then, we, you know, just sort of hang out, enjoy a day where there are no requirements. Uh, even even gift giving is not a big deal in our family anymore. You know, you're young and you're all excited for the Christmas tree boxes but you get older, and it's more just hanging out and uh, enjoying one another's company. Mm. And then, of, and then a family dinner, usually with uh, we're going to have a lot of house guests this ah. uh, this time. So that'll be looking forward to that. And I'll have my Santa hat in just the right place. <coughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> wow i I think I nearly made him choke. Yo, oh, yeah, that is that is good to know. It, <sighs> yeah, it 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 it's actually something that kind of goes on uh, as you grow older. Because yeah, when you're a child, you're like, oh my gosh, did you get me the fire truck? Did you get me the toy fire truck? I love the toy fire. Every every kid has had a toy fire truck. I just say that. Uh, but it is it is it is true that as you grow old, you pay less attention to the material, and you start focusing more on uh, the people. And you are like, um, there is there is nothing like sitting in in front of the TV to watch a holiday movie with, with your parents or like with your uncles or something like that. And it's like that. It, even if you're not saying anything, you're saying a lot, uh, being with them. Oh my word! You reminded me of uh, of one Christmas, like I think two or three years ago, uh, when I actually wrote a letter to Santa because oh, I ref- I refused to think that Santa wasn't real. I wrote a letter that I wanted uh, these specific shoes, and I wrote the measurements of it and how to make it. <laughs> okay. And Please I didn't get it. Oh, I God. didn't get it. <laughs> Please tell me these shoes had rockets in them. <laughs> no, I I was too stupid back then. No, I'm you're sorry. Not you're, you're not stupid. You're not stupid. You're, you're just, just young. You just hadn't seen Iron Man yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Iron Man is my favorite movie from Marvel. <laughs> Yay. But anywho, uh, I've just linked something interesting for you guys to check it out. This would be the Friendship is Magic issue 29. Since we're all about the comics and whatnot and we like to review, so why don't we just talk about this one? Apparently this one is this one involves um, Cheer Lee and her sister, who is a pro wrestler. Ah. Uh-huh. What? I <laughs> can't like Mega Man. I can't decide if the comics have jumped the shark or not. <laughs> well, I you know what? Considering that in the first issue we have an entire page full of references, and one of them is you see the Blues Brothers, Magnum mm-hmm. PI, and a few other things in them. I think that they didn't just they, right away they didn't jump the shark. They started with the. You remember what the nostalgia critic did to the shark? In the review for the Never Ending Story 3. That's what the comics have done to the shark. I'm not going to repeat it here. It will censor the entire thing. Oh, but God. that's what the comics did to the shark. <laughs> but you know what? Um, I, I am going to enjoy this because one of my one of my interests is wrestling. So, yay. <laughs> really now? 
Yeah, I know it's fake. I I know they. I know it's not real. Well, technically, it's real people getting hit and whatnot. But it's just the showmanship. It's just the drama that they do. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. I feel like this podcast has been written by Pinkie Pie because it has no fuck yous. I know, right? Thank you, Buffy. <laughs> You're welcome. Nice and, and special, man. And, and this is different from our normal comic reviews. How? <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, there's always a comic involved. Well, That's why. Comic, uh, yeah, this is true. Look, all, all I'm saying is that we need to make sure someone sends a copy of this, the Spoonie experiment. <laughs> oh, yes. Because, oh, God. Because Noah Antwerler, I've listened to his vlogs, his hour and a half long complaints about wrestling. <laughs> yeah, the poor, yeah, yeah. the poor guy has lost his passion for the show. There's Ooh. an emotional vulnerability here. Let's brainwash him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 It's the perfect time to turn him into a brony. You know, uh, the, the sh- most shocking tweet he ever posted he was discussing with little Kuribo from uh, the Yu Gi Oh bridge mm-hmm. and um uh, they were talking about a fictional characters getting the very violent very terrible deaths in mm-hmm. fiction and the one example that he puts was how king sombra was obliterated into pieces who little uh, Kuribo or spoonie no spoonie spoonie mentioned that <laughs> and i'm like whoa whoa whoa, whoa hey ho no aunt Wyler is making a my little pony what <laughs> what <laughs> Is it, so I was like, explain. How do you know that? <laughs> Did he? he? Cannot, yeah, seriously. I'm, I'm looking for it. I have the screen cap of it, actually. I tagged it <laughs> as WTF, Spoonie. <laughs> because I couldn't believe what I was saying. I was like, how do you know that? You need to be a fan of the show to know that. How do you know that? <laughs> so, yeah. Now we ha- Silver has a good idea. Bring up your uh, modulator 3000 helmet thingy, <laughs> whatever you use to brainwash Kim Possible. And uh, we have to use it on him. Yeah, so it looks like we, <laughs> well, James and Silver might have a plan. So, yay! Yay! So, we've discussed what we guys do on during the holidays and whatnot. So, obviously, knowing who we are, I'm sure that we all have Amazon wishlist and whatnot. So, what are you guys expecting for Christmas? Hmm. Silver? A pony. <laughs> a pony, eh? Yay! <laughs> Paint for you, Silver? You sure? Oh, no, wait, that's my next collaboration. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a timeless reference because I'm always in pain. No. Uh, <laughs> truth be told, I meant what I said that it's become less about the gifts you're going to get. Mm-hmm. Uh, from my friends, we all, my friends are still very much into the whole Christmas list thing, so I know kind of items to list off. Although we kind of joked, it's basically, we'd all just be trading how to train your dragon to. Blu rays. <laughs> we all yeah. wanted the same movie, so we we're all just like handing out, oh, here you go, here you go, here you go. Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh. So, oh. It's going to be, a, it may be a rather one note gift session on that score. Dreamworks, take our money. <laughs> That's a very good movie. It's worth throwing your money at it. Oh, very yeah. much. Uh, yes. but, but I will say from my mom, uh, I had my birthday earlier this month. Mm-hmm. She got me this t shirt. It has a bone on the front with the, mm-hmm. with the caption, uh, I found this humorous. <laughs> oh, no. No. I, yes. I will now okay. wear my humor on my chest. And I'm expecting a f- there was a hint of more puntastic fashion that would make Rarity scream. Uh, it's promised to come at Christmas. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh god! Oh, I can't wait to I can't wait to hear what you get for Christmas. <laughs> you, James? Uh, well, you know, funny enough, um, I did make a wish list on Amazon, and I made a mistake. Uh, I put in air quotes mistake <laughs> uh, of listing of linking it on my Tumblr and uh, to a few of my friends, and I. I just put the wish list because it's like a formality. It's like, oh, I wish I could get like this movie and this movie and oh, this Pacific Rim book is so great and all that. And I was, I just put it. During the entire month of December, people have been sending me stuff, and I feel so bad for it because it's like, yeah, I put the wish list just so to remember what I want to buy. I didn't want you guys to buy me all of this stuff. I, and now I am like, I need to buy you guys something, but I. I don't know what. What do you want me to buy? And they're like, no, it's fine. It's okay. Like, I, so I see if I am... Try, I, I, I will try and get people people stuff. Because 
the same that I am given, I, I want to give back. Oh, that's nice of you. Buffy, you? There is an, a very nice song that I am kind of getting bored of uh, in, in Christmas. Mm -hmm. All I want for Christmas is you. No. Oh. <laughs> because, um, actually, um, why I bring up the song, because I love my family. And there's nothing more than I want is you know, only my friends and family. And even though I don't want anything, I want to give people stuff. But I feel bad because I cannot do it. Well, just have to wait and get some cash. And well, here's the thing. Here's, here's an awesome thing to do. Like, usually when people get people stuff, it's, oh, I bought you this expensive gift, which is this PlayStation 4, this Wii U, ah. this X-Bone. So, oh, yeah. yay, no. there, there's a lot of stuff. Though those are nice and all, but, you know... I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I, I'm not finished yet, James. But, you know, the best gift that you can give on a budget is socks. Because, hey, I got socks. So, yay, as adults, we don't go shopping for socks that much. And if someone gives us socks, like, hey, that's cool. I'll put it in the drawer. And when you get up and you want to put on a pair of socks, hey, this socks. And, hey, I remember this. This is a Christmas gift from Puffy. Oh, that's so cool. And then you just wear your socks. I mean, it's lame sounding, but you know what? Clothing is cool. Or you could like, donate a kidney. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, yeah. that is actually... Oh, sorry, go ahead. It'll just sell off a kidney. There, you got cash, and you only need one. <laughs> Maybe. Oh. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, it's actually kind of funny because uh, that, that reminds me of um, a one time we were doing like um, uh, uh, paper pa uh, paper heart scarouts, mm -hmm. and one of my classmates he ended up doing such a terrible job cutting the heart that it looked like a kidney. <laughs> and we were we were thinking about that, and we, we were like, you know what? It's actually more physically possible to donate someone your kidney and survive <laughs> than to give them your heart. <laughs> So yeah, you know what? It's actually a more more of a meaningful uh, present to give them your kidney because then you both can enjoy that you're both alive. But if you give someone your heart, you're going to die. Uh, I went dark very hard, very fast. Sorry, I didn't mean uh, to. Don't gift wrap your kidney. That's all. It's a waste of paper. Yeah, if you're going to give wrap, give wrap it, uh, give wrap it in ice. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> be careful with that so uh, if you guys take a look see at the notes or at the Skype tea, um there's another comic the Friends Forever issue 15 and this time we have an odd combo I love First the odd combos what the hell <gasps> ooh I like this one it's Applejack and Mare Mare <laughs> I can't really look at my screen and be on the mic at the same time. Is it the one where Applejack look like, looks like she's about to commit bloody murder? <laughs> Indeed. Yes. yes. Applejack uh, looks like she's about to go into the grassy knoll and just pull out JFK on <laughs> Major Mare. She's about to kill her. Yeah. <laughs> That's the face <laughs> I do when I'm about to choke slam someone. Uh, I do Except for the fire song. part. <laughs> my hand doesn't burst into flame. Oh, man. Well, well, long, that'd be cool. As long as she waits till pumpkin cake is out of the line of fire. <laughs> oh god, it could be like in that uh it could it could be like in that terrible Stephen King movie The Dead Zone with wow. Christopher Walken. I, I am digressing. <laughs> I just can't wait to see what goes on because reading at the synopsis here, it's wow, this is gonna be cool. Applejack goes to the city hall and somehow gets involved with this and now she's burning up. Yay. <laughs> well it's it might actually... be the re uh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. <clears throat> uh, it might be uh, the um, the pay uh, the payment back uh, that she was very very Over tired and kind of drunk on the episode where she kind of got that award. And she was oh. like, "Woo, woo!" But that was a while ago. It was season could... one. Yes. I, I would I would say that over the barrel because she promised giving the town hall money for repair the roof because of that is the last roundup. Uh, over oh. the barrel is the one with the buffalo ponies yeah, and sorry, the buffalo and the pony settlers. Yes, buffalo ponies. What the hell did I just say? <laughs> 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 well, uh, cross pieces. 
<laughs> well, that that's what happens if you really do ship uh, Brave Bird and little, and little Braveheart. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Ulti Pio. I don't know uh, if people have really thought that ship through. Hey, have you seen the ship between Yildai and uh, Rainbow Dash? I have seen ships that would curl your eyes. Tom and... Ship, Malt, Tom and... Tom and who was that again? Um, Tom and... Rarity? Tom no, and... Brave Tom and... Malt. Tom and, Tom and Bloomberg. Yeah, Bloomberg. Those two. <laughs> yes, Tom and Bloomberg. It was called Sticks and Stones, actually. Oh, it's a fanfic of it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, maybe. Oh, they get there. But actually, uh, uh, but with Applejack, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that one more than the wrestling because it actually touches on something I said with... Uh, I, I once said Applejack, the only way for her to be the underdog seems mm-hmm. to be to get her out of Ponyville and disconnected from her friends because she's got this great power base in the town. Mm-hmm. But I look at this cover and I think, you know, she's a very say this and do it kind of pony. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bureaucracy is anything but that. <laughs> yes. Yep. So, oh, God. So this is the one way she could really look like the underdog in her own town. Oh god, that's so cool! And you know what? It's also coming from um, from Bobby Corno, who up until now he has been the editor of the of the series, but he very rarely has written uh, a comic. He has written one or two issues, but I think just one in the whole span of the whole comics, if I remember yeah. right. So uh, he's written Jack one. Oh wow! The Applejack Mike. Oh, there you go. So you know what? In uh, coming coming from him, and if what you said, Silver is right, and this comic is uh, about bureaucracy. Bobby Corno has done nothing but dealing with this kind of thing <laughs> since the comic started. Because, I mean, yeah, of course, creative process and all that, but 50% of putting something in the market is bureaucracy. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm pretty sure he's... I, I, I am going to read that comic thinking that Applejack is an XP for Bobby Corno. So whenever he <laughs> says she says something snarky, I want to imagine it's Bobby Corno saying it. <laughs> that, that's a comic, can't wait. Oh, I mean... Um, for you, Silver, you said that you're more excited for this one. As for me, I'm going. I'm excited for both. Like I said, I'm a fan of wrestling, even though I know it's fake. But hey, the to me, wrestling is like soap opera for men. It kind of is, actually. Yeah, I know. Oh, it absolutely <laughs> is. I know. It's all fake. People just nag and fight each other and whatnot. You do also have that in soap opera, but in wrestling, they just hit people with chairs and sometimes fights in cages. Today on all my suplexes. <laughs> That's the incredible Hulk. I'm sorry. I know. Yeah. That about, is cool. That's cool. Or about as the face turns heel. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, you got me. <laughs> Body slams for eternity. <laughs> good, good lord, what what did I make you do over there? Yeah, just, it's just, it's just like that. <laughs> Puffy, begin your imagination. Oh god! Oh god! <laughs> so, Not you too. <laughs> I ship it. Yeah. So, um, so back onto the holidays and the snowflakes and snowfalls. Uh, oh yeah, you know what? We mm-hmm. I didn't mention. I, I'm going to ask you guys something oh. right away. What movies do you guys watch during the holidays? Hmm. Home Alone 1 and Home 2. Alone. <laughs> Home Alone 1, 2, 3, 4, because that's... What? Uh, that, that, yes, um, yes. We have those in Latvia every year. Oh. Uh, Home Alone on the TV for Latvia has been, I think, around 10 years or more. Wow. Same here. Same here. But I'll only admit the first two. The third and the fourth were kind of... That's sh- not a word! In my opinion. I can't uh, believe, the I believe the last word. I apologize. Interesting. The third was interesting. It was different. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Nothing <laughs> must stay the same. I don't like changes. <laughs> I don't like change. Uh, but see, you, Silver? Let's see. Scrooged is always a fun uh, fun movie to see, as is Chevy Chase's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> I, I guess I've kind of gotten away from the wholesome stuff, and now I like the, the silly. But last year, I found a favorite in The Hog's Father, a Discworld oh. movie. <gasps> yes! which was wow. a lot of fun. And anyone who's read <clears throat> Terry Pratchett's work knows he offers a, a marvelous insight into why Christmas is more, and even the belief in Santa Claus is more than just telling kids a fairy tale. 
That is so good. That is so good. I I want to get my sister that book. She's a massive fan of Terry Pratchett. So am I. Uh, but I I didn't have the, the 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 time to calmly sit down and enjoy his books. I only read like two of them. Well, it's the man. I could actually quote to you uh, the great speech on uh, the real meaning of Christmas, or rather, oh, what? believing in Santa Claus. Basically, the death of the Discworld. You know, the Grim Reaper image. He has to take over as the local Santa Claus for Christmas. Which, if you think Nightmare Before Christmas was trippy, just you wait. <laughs> but he's explaining to his uh, granddaughter why it's important to believe in uh, Santa Claus. Like, because once you've accepted that, you can start to believe the bigger lies. Love, truth, mercy, and kindness. Wow. And his, and his granddaughter says, but those aren't lies. And Death replies, then take the universe... Grind it up and run it through the finest sieve and show me one atom of, of uh, mercy, one molecule of kindness, one atom of generosity. You have, to, you have to believe the little lies so you can make the big lies real. And there's a kind of truth to that. By believing in things, you make them real, which is a theme of the book. And while that might sound cynical at first... But in truth, it's actually very optimistic. We have this ability to make positive things real if we kind of open, if we don't close ourselves off to the idea early on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like if you open up to it, it, it you can you can let it get to you, yeah, and it can it, it gives you it gives you a thing to keep going forward to to, to to keep fighting for. I know it's like my friend, like our friend Kitsune, he believes that Final Fantasy thirteen is good. Oh, he believes no. it. Don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, that is something. That is something very in character for death, and also very out of character as well. Because like, death is like the ultimate uh, cynic in the in the this world uh, books, and that sounds totally like something he will say. But at the same time, it's something very, very touching coming from him. I need to read that book now. God damn. Hmm. Actually, this... I've, I've always viewed him as the biggest pragmatist on the disc. <laughs> Uh, you know, he he just calls it like he sees it, and, and he's seen everything. Mm. That sounds fun. What's the book called again, Silva? The Hogfather. The Hogfather. And, and if it's anything like last year, it should be on Netflix uh, it, as a two-part movie. Oh, wow. They have been doing a lot of those Discworld movies as of late. like, um, And they are like kind of like TV movies, right? They have that... that uh... Yeah, I, I, won't, I won't say you'll have like fantastic visual effects. I would... Oh, I would be so happy if they had a Discworld movie in theaters with a Lord of the Rings budget. <laughs> yeah, wow. but then you know what will happen if they if they do that, right? They'll give it to Michael Bay. <laughs> well, not really. I think they will be a smart and give it to Peter Jackson, but I don't think that will be a smart move either because Peter Jackson will go, hmm, you know, this book that could be summed up in like one movie, I'm going to stretch it, to stretch it into three movies and then I'm going to put a lot of these things that have nothing to do with it. Sorry, I'm going to go in a rant. But yeah, it's like you have to be careful with, with how you do it. Um, the, the way Game of Thrones is adapting the books is a proper way to do it. Mm-hmm. Because you are, you, they are putting everything from the books, but since it's a TV show format, they can allow themselves to have some pacing, mm-hmm. to have character development. A movie is not like that. Like, uh, you're going to have people sitting on the on the seats for like three hours. <laughs> Their butts are going to hurt by the end of the, by the time the movie's over. Like, uh, whoa, hey, kids sake, podcast. It, <laughs> well, that's only if the movie is really bad. In case oh, the movie is like, uh, uh, but no, it's but, uh, no, but yeah, yeah. Consider that that when you're adapting a movie, you're going to leave a lot of things out, or you run the risk of putting way too many things in and losing the audience interest. So just remember when when you're talking about three hours movies, that'll be me watching The Hobbit this Thursday. Oh man, I can't oh. wait. I I understand I'm wa- when we watch that one too. I, I already have my tickets reserved for this Saturday, taking Ooh. the family to the to the movies. Yes. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yes, and it's yes. a good thing that we would be recording this Saturday. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> I won't be able to attend. Well, okay, I so. wouldn't have either. <laughs> uh, I'll be able to sleep in. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as for me, my Christmas movie that I always watch on Christmas. Funny enough, I, I don't watch a lot of TVs nowadays, even with movies. Um, if you were to ask me, like, what would I watch or what would I like to watch, I'd say what Roman Puffy said. 
the Home Alones, and uh, just for the fun of it, I want to watch Die Hard. That's the yeah. movies. So yeah, I want to try and see that. Like, it's supposed to be fun, right? It's the Nostalgia Critics number one holiday but not holiday movie. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, it, this supposed to it, be good. Blank you, it's Die Hard. Censor <laughs> <laughs> is Die Hard. Yep. It, no, but it, it is. It is it is kind of true that um, it is a great Christmas movie when you think about it. Like it does, it doesn't have to do anything with Christmas. It takes place in Christmas. It ends with Let It Snow. <laughs> How many action movies end with a Christmas Carol? Oh, not that many. are that are so good. Not many movies. I think and that's that the only one, right? Except for the Die Hard two. The second Entry. one is not. The second one is not as bad as people think, and the third one doesn't end with "Let It Snow." The second one, the, the third one, it ends with um, ends with like uh, the, the soundtrack from Doctor Strange Love, like <laughs> that. <laughs> but you know what? Um, I'm excited for the Doctor Who special, like that's coming out for Christmas. So I, I say I want to watch the Doctor Who one. Yeah. So. Hmm. I want to rewatch um, A Nightmare Before Christmas because it's amazing. I actually watched it before Christmas um, <laughs> because I never had seen it because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm young and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I loved it. It's really, such know. a great, um, it's more of a cartoon, <laughs> but I really do recommend if anyone can watch it, then go for it. Good one, good one. I, do, I kind of don't like that one because of Kingdom Hearts. Thank you, Square Enix. Yeah. Aww. Like, the movie's oh, not bad, really? but the level, playing that level, it's like, oh, God. Uh. Uh, but come on. The, <laughs> the Little Mermaid sing-alongs were way worse. That was in part two. That was yeah, in part that, two. No, no, but yeah, no, but Silver is right. No, Those sing-along ask. levels can go into the, the, into the deepest region of the septic tank of video game design. That was bad. Hmm. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, so, well... I've answered my thing, and James, have you have you answered your set? Do you really want to let the movie guy go crazy and talk about this? Yes. Sure, okay. why not? It's yeah. a season. Sure. Just uh, let me okay. go order lunch. Yep. <laughs> Good idea. We're gonna be here for a couple of hours now. Um, I'm actually surprised you guys haven't mentioned this movie. Uh, one of the ones that I watch that I watch a lot during these holidays is Rise of the Guardians. Oh, that one. Yes. Yes. Also known as the ultimate crossover of childhood oh, ever. <laughs> like, you have the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, the Sandman, Jack Frost, and Santa Claus joining oh, forces to yeah. defeat Peach Black. And it's like, you have Chris Pine as Jack Frost, you have Alec Baldwin as a perfect Santa Claus, Hugh Jackman is the Easter Bunny, who is hilarious, <laughs> and the bad guy is played by Jude Law. You cannot go wrong with, uh, uh, and of course, the Tooth Fairy is played by Isla, Fa- Isla Fisher. You cannot go wrong with such a cast uh, of people. Uh, produced by Guillermo del Toro. G- gorgeous movie. You definitely need to check it out. Um, another movie that people have to watch also, and I'm going to sound like the nostalgia critic when mm-hmm. I say this, but you need to watch Arthur Christmas. Arthur Christmas? Oh, that one. I heard Arthur, a lot of good things. It's a um, British movie, really heartwarming, feels great surprising in its resolution and very, very clever in its execution as well because it's a very fast-paced comedy that allows itself to have some quiet, slow moments that you can, like, enjoy and, and be like, oh, this is actually so nice. This is actually so 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 good, so pretty. So hmm. that is also a good, a good movie as well. Um, you, uh, Tokyo Godfathers. Oh, that one. That one is a movie that not many people know. It's an anime. Uh, and it is as grungy and as dark as it can get. It is also really uplifting. Like, some of the, so, some of the moments that anime has are really, really touching. Really, really well done as well. Uh, so definitely check it out. And uh, last but not least, this is not a Christmas movie, but it kind of goes on with the spirit of the season. You guys should check it out, a movie called Fargo. Mm. I heard of that one. Uh, it's a 1996 movie directed by the Coen brothers uh, about a, a kidnapping that goes wrong and then the police uh, has, to, has to investigate it. And it, I am not going to say more than that. You need to 
check that movie out because even though it's not Christmassy, there is a lot of snow, there, there is a lot of winter imagery going on, and it has a really good message towards the end. Like the last dialogue that the cop has uh, in the police car with one of the kidnappers, it is, it is a it's a very strong, very powerful dialogue, and it's really good. And it is in very in, in, in spirit with the season. You know, they, um, it's all about being together. Uh, life is more than just uh, sharing presents and all that. It's not so materialistic. Something like that. It is a very good movie. So uh, there you go. Those are usually the movies that I watch during this, this time. So are you enjoying your lunch, Silver? <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Tastes, it tastes like children's broken dreams. No. <laughs> oh. no. Oh. Are you talking about, are you eating the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie then? Oh, uh, God. No, no, that's, like, that's Michael Bay's you dream. You can eat no, the no, no. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, TV series because I don't like it. Oh, God. No, wait, no, no, no. Wait, okay. wait, wait. You're young. Which one are you talking about? Uh, the, one the new one. Literally the newest hey, one. Hey, that's good. That's good. It's not. It's not. Yeah, it's the it's good. one. Yeah, the Nick one is good. Oh, yeah, I've Are seen a few sh- episodes of that. It's, 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 it's cool. It's not. The 2000 one. It, 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 the one that comes like around 2008 or oh, something. Oh, that, that one. one. I have 17. Wait, are you talking about the movie? <laughs> no, I have 17 out of 20 DVDs. That was my favorite show when I was a oh, child. Oh, that, you're talking about TMNT, uh, that one. No, I mean. It was me, oh, that one. Yeah, it's that like, was good. That was good from what I heard. But no, um, you're talking about like the current one that looks like a CGI anime. Yeah, no. I mean, that one personally, that, personally to me, I watched that one and I highly enjoyed it. It's really good. For me, look, I'm I'm the old curmudgeon who saw the original '80s cartoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So oh. you've got you've got the super grim and gritty 2008 version. You've got the more flippant. Uh, one that's going on Nickelodeon right now. That one's sort of the compromise. Mm-hmm. Oh, fun fact for you, James. Uh, what is in it? the new one in season three, Leonardo is played by Seth Green. You mean yeah. Joker from Mass Effect? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they changed his voice by having him get beaten within an inch of his life. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's so cool. Oh, oh seriously? Yeah. yeah. Oh my but god. I will, but I will say this third season is taking forever to do anything. Oh yeah, it's all, it's all movie parodies. Yeah, I I don't yeah, know no. what's wrong. I I don't know what's going on in the modern or the western cartoon industry because I don't know how things are run that way. Because you have this period of time where the show comes out we um one week after another, and then there's a span of nothing comes out at all, and then comes in comes out. I like I don't know what the scheduling is like. Like at least anime, you got once a week, and if they're done, they're done. Like this one, I got no idea. That happens to Adventure Time, like most of the cartoon networks and whatnot. I, I need to somebody selfish when I say this, but screw it. My T and my my Mutant Ninja Turtles, the ones that I watched, are the ones with Uncle Phil as the Shredder. Oh, same here. Yeah, I'm sorry, but those those are those are the ones that I watched as a kid. Um, as much as I didn't, I, I didn't mind them. It was the furry fandom, the ones that uh, the ones Destroy that ruined them. Turtles um... for me. But I was a massive fan of the Turtles when I was a kid. I had the toys. I watched the cartoon. I watched the movie. Oh, my God. I did have the movies. I was such an, I actually... My favorite will always be the second one. Um, more action. better, More action. More character. Less, yeah. less serious than the first one. Uh, but to me, those are the Turtles that I grew up with and the ones that I liked. And they haven't captured the magic again. I mean, they haven't. It's like they they caught lightning, the lightning in a bottle, uh, the proverbial lightning in a bottle with the original turtles. And right after, they have been trying to do the same, instead of being their own thing. With the turtles IP, it's it's a bit complicated in the sense of it started off gr- grim and gritty because of uh, how the comics were, but when TV networks got it. They kind of, hey, let's do it kid-friendly. And so, there. And it was a wonderful concept. People started to copy it. You got Biker Mike from Mars, Street Sharks, and so on. And now, doing the same thing again with uh, the show, because, remember, Saban had a shot at it, and they did live-action turtles. And you got Venus de Milo. Yeah. 
So after that, you got the 2008 Turtles, uh, Tier 90 for short, and then you got the movie by Ubisoft, which was confusing if you did not watch the whoa, series. Whoa, 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 hey, hold wait a minute. You mean that that movie with Patrick Stewart as the villain was done by Ubisoft? Yep. Is that why every single fight scene looked like a cutscene on a video game? Yep. Oh, God. Okay. Guys. That makes sense. Guys, guys, yeah? it's not 2008. I was wrong by four years. It's 2004. Wow. I'm yeah. I'm looking at the original uh, DVD that I have. Wow. But well, well, you, you were wrong on the internet. Go stand in shame. <laughs> I am, well, stand, uh, I am sitting in a to corner. Now. Oh, God, no. I am uh, sitting in a corner. Leave me alone. I, 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 I literally am. You, you, have, uh, you have to stand in a corner, turn so you're facing the wall, <laughs> and keep your head down low so that, you know, full uh, penance. Also, I, I should make a cat and be like, uh, and, put, uh, and put like embarrassing stuff on it. <laughs> no, yeah, Silva. Where the cone of shame? <laughs> yes, of shame. but That's uh, we we've kind of cut Ron out of this conversation. Oh yeah, and you know what? Talking about the turtles, um, Heather Breckles also doing the IDW comic for the turtles, and what does Back Heather Breckles do? Because Heather Breckles is one of the she's the colorist of the uh, the MLP comics. Yeah, and uh, funny yeah, enough, to... <laughs> yeah, funny enough, there's a Christmas special that we kind of didn't <laughs> we jump the gun because wow. uh, oh on Christmas God. Day Silver, we got do you Luna. That, do you have that collar from your Brave Star review? I think the whiplash just broke my neck. <laughs> uh, <sorry>. Always. <laughs> Thank you. That topic we... just... just wow. <laughs> uh, jumping around again. So, yeah, um, who got this comic book? I did uh, through the Humble Bundle, but I haven't read it. I thought of reading it this around out on the tomorrow. Bundle? Really? Oh, this one just came out today. Oh, then no. Huh? Yeah, I've I've read it. Oh, okay. Um, I just started reading it, and I haven't gone through. You, James? I didn't get the chance to even download it. I I didn't even purchase it in paperback format because, well. Uh, yeah, okay, Equestria Girls is fine, everything, but not yeah. enough for me to buy it on paperback. But <laughs> okay. I, 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 I might buy it on digital. I mean, is is, is it the same writer as the, the first Ted Equestria Anderson. Girls? Yeah, okay, then in that case, I'm definitely going to see if I can download it, because uh, I like his writing. I like what he does mm. with his... Uh, I, I noticed that Ted Anderson does a lot of the um, Equestria Girl world, so well, that's did, interesting. He did the three <laughs> annuals. He did the, the first Equestria Girls... Mm -hmm. uh, one in collaboration with Katie Cook and Andy Price, and then he also wrote the Power Ponies one, and mm -hmm. he's done the Christmas special one. So, yeah, go Ted. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I can't wait to take a look see and read through the whole thing. But um, Silver, what's your first impression of this? Worth the buy? Well, I, I don't really do impressions. I mean, I, I just quote clips. No. <laughs> <laughs> but. It's pretty fun. How can I describe without giving too much away? A lot of the content is recycled from either the movies or from Friendship is Magic. You'll be able to point and say, oh, they put in an element of uh, bridal gossip. Well, not bridal gossip. I'm just throwing out titles here. Ponyville mm -hmm. Confidential. There you go. Or they threw in for sweetie, for whom the Sweetie Belle toils. Oh, and Sunset's crying like she did at the end of Equestria Girls. Oh, so you see, you see a lot of what's come before. And in a way, that reflects the connection between the two worlds. This, this is new territory for the human characters. Mm -hmm. But from the audience, audience's perspective, it might be an old hat. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can, that can influence how much you enjoy the comic. Uh, I will say that the first Equestria Girls comics really didn't add anything new. Especially the fall of Sunset Shimmer. This one, Sunset once again is going to be, I think, the the fandom darling. They're just gonna, <laughs> but it's because oh, yeah. it's because everyone's mean to her. Oh, she's gone from the girl who's mean to everyone to the girl everyone is mean to. And I'm kind of like, you know, that worked in Rainbow Rocks, but I hope there's more to her than just victimization. I believe that in this season or in this uh, timeline, Sunset Shimmer. Is going to be the whipping boy or the whipping girl for this part of the arc. Like you said, she was mean to everyone in the first arc, and the second arc, everyone's mean to her. And in the third one, everybody's going to be friends with everyone, and she's going to be that. Hey, um, you used to be mean, but you change. 
Yeah. So, yeah, th- that's why I believe, but I could be wrong. And you, James? Uh, the, the road to redemption is long and arduous. Uh, there are different routes you can take it. You can either be discord and don't give too much of a crap while you're getting redeemed. Like, oh, I don't care if I am screwing around with these, uh, with these ponies. I am just going to have fun. And then you make a mistake that ends up, uh, Making you change your perspective, and there you go. However, Sunset Shimmer doesn't seem to take that road. That, that route. She she really wants to be redeemed, but they don't trust her. So, uh, whenever I see Sunset, Sunset being like a mopey, dopey, kind of sad, kind of like, like oh, but I don't want to be like this. I want to change. To I want to change. I want to be good. I I want you guys to accept me. It kind of is more legitimized. Also because of the high school setting. Because, mm-hmm. let, let's face it, when people perceive you as the bad guy, uh, you have to work very hard uh, to convince people that you're not bad. And I think that is one of the reasons why I like anti-heroes and, and redeem villains so much. They're, they're, they're my favorite characters in fiction. And, yeah, I will, I will agree with you, Norman, the, and, and with you, Silver, that Sunset is turning into the, the fandom's waifu. <laughs> she and it's funny. I thought it was going to be Sonata. You know, uh-huh. it's that uh-huh. it is <laughs> for me. It's both because I love Sonata and uh, because I feel that she's very intelligent inside. She's just being childish while she can. Oh, uh, who Sonata? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, Sonata doesn't have too much of a character to her, except that she's hanging out with the wrong crowd and she's a very ditzy <laughs> character and she looks kind of cute. <laughs> but Un- Sunset has a... L- oh, sorry, what? Well, until she transforms into a sea demon that feeds on your unhappiness. Yeah. I kind of feel like we overlooked that part. <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. That's the thing. I actually was going to say that uh, Sonata has that going for her, but what she doesn't have is a personality and a backstory. That The only thing that we know about Sonata is that she used to be a part of these sirens that they used to terrify Equestria until Starshul the Bearded just used the Bind Hammer and kicked them all into <laughs> another dimension. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's, that's what she has going on for her. However, Sunset Shimmer has a lot more going on for her. Like, she used to be the former student of Princess Celestia. She used to be in Equestria. She went into this other world because she wanted to, to get power and become powerful and become, like, you know, a ruler and all that. And Things, things didn't turn out okay, and now she's trying to make up for her mistakes. And she tried to kill Twilight, <laughs> but failed. And, yeah, no, but I mean, she has a lot more going on for her rather than than, than Sonata. Sonata yeah. has a meme going for her. Uh, Sunset has more of a story development. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with, with well, we we could just use this for the. Um, Rainbow Rock reviews. You know what? I'm gonna stop it here because Rainbow Rock reviews might be in the future for us. So yeah. But anywho, uh, so we've done this for almost an hour on tape. So uh, what no else? Use tape. Yes. <laughs> hey there, Rob. But anyway, um, so with that, is there anything else you want to say? I just remembered. I'm silly. I'm silly, silly me because of the holidays. Yes, um, oh, this may be... Oh, jump- oh New Sorry? Year Resolutions. New yep. Year Resolutions. Yep, I was go- about to get to that and jumping the gun a bit. New Year's Resolutions. So, um, <laughs> same thing again. Silver, you? Well, I resolved to actually come up with some resolutions. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> like I say, it's going to be a, se- a year for Season 5, so lots of reviews to be done. Mm-hmm. Try to get more videos out, but to be honest, that probably means less collaborations because those are the ones that really demand the most time. Oh, yeah. Coordinating that many people cannot be easy. Yep. <laughs> Take a look at this one. <laughs> well, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And Ro, what about you? New Year's My New Year's resolution is 1440 by 900. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of getting a second monitor, but then I figured, nah. <laughs> All right. They'll be good about it, then. <laughs> All right. You, Puffy? What about you? Uh, Switzerland. Switzerland? No, no resolution for you? Uh, my resolution is actually to finish, uh, because, you know, I live in Europe and stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I, I haven't finished uh, middle school yet, and I want to get into, a high, into the same high school I am in now, because, mm. yay, 
and get some money. So you can travel to Galakon or Buck? I can't. I even can't do that. Even Ooh. if I get money. It's Ooh. bad. Look, if you're European, there's only one goal you should have. Spreading the metric system. <laughs> uh, Us Americans, we go by this foot and inches thing. It's really dumb. Uh, yep. I, I'm using the metric right now. Kilometers and um, kilograms. <laughs> <laughs> so you James what's your resolution uh, I don't have any really now yes I don't have any and I am not going to have any and I have come to this realization is that um, I don't know everybody James is about to be very cynical but no I am <laughs> I am honest with this because every time that I set up a new year resolution, resolution I never never finish them like okay I'm going to lose some weight uh, two weeks later ah uh, screw it <laughs> but, or, I am going to do more exercise three months later. Ah, screw it. It's boring. I rather uh, and it's taking time from me to uh, to 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 work Art. on commissions. I cannot, mm. I cannot afford to do this kind of thing. Okay, uh, this that is also it's like it's it is to me is something that yeah it's good. It's kind of like you know new year new life. But when you think about it. What? How many New Year's resolutions are actually um, uh, worth keeping? Not many. And some mm-hmm. of those we are like, okay, it, it's like we think we can change this from a year to another. You need you need more time than that. So I said, no, I'm not going to put any New Year resolution. I am going to fix my problems as they come. Mm-hmm. That might mm-hmm. be the one and only New New Year resolution that I have is that if I am uh, going to do something to fix my mistakes, and I have many. I will be the first one to admit this. Uh, I am going to fix them as as I'm being told. Oh, all right, all right. I mean, not everyone can have a New Year's resolution. It's not easy to make one and keep to it. I love lists, but not not that kind. <laughs> Maybe a joke you... the Russians have. If you want to make God laugh, make plans for tomorrow. <laughs> oh yeah, right. I've heard of it. <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> But as for me, uh, I don't do resolutions that much because I kind of know that it's pointless, What like what Jim says. But, you know, I, I'm going to try. This year, I'm going to try and do a vlog of myself for the show, talking about the process or talking about what's behind the scene and whatnot, and talking about general things. So, yeah, I'm going to try and do that and hope it works. If not... <laughs> It'll be like James. Yeah, just once. Okay, I'm done. I'm bored with this. It's not gonna work. So done. <laughs> the making of the MBS show, the movie, yep. the game. Oh god, no! The soundtrack, <laughs> the novel, the novel, the documentary. Oh, uh, the, the doc, the doc. Based on a true story. Yeah. <laughs> Based, Based on the board game. <laughs> starring George Clooney. Oh god. <laughs> Jonah <laughs> Hill and Leonardo DiCaprio. As I'll never get an Oscar in my life. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, but anyway. Think we get Christopher Walken on this one? Yes! Yes! Can, can we get John Delancey too? Because I'll hail John Delancey. Probably. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> uh, well, so anywho, anywho. Um, any shout outs from you guys? Because I, I'm going to go first if you don't mind. I'm going to shout out to you all James, Rom. Silver and Puffy, thank you for coming on on not so short notice, but just thank you for coming on because I'm grateful for you guys for coming here and I hope we can do this again because I am happy to know you guys and I am happy to do this with you guys. I officially missed my Christmas concert right now. <laughs> oh God, no. I'm sorry. Well done, uh, man. I'm sorry. It's yeah, it's a- it actually is his fault, to be honest. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wow! Anywho, James, what about you? Shout outs. Um, not only I want to give uh, a shout out to each and every one of you. Like, um, thank you, Norman, for keeping me on the show. Like, mm-hmm. not uh, not kicking me out, um, putting up with my BS every now and then. And like, uh, I am giving you a lot of work. I'm trying not to give you any work for this one. Uh, <laughs> I think you will all you will only have to censor Puffy. Uh, <laughs> this is good. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult to keep it friendly, uh, but thank you also, Puffy, for uh, uh, for being there, being such a supporter, um, uh, not just uh, morally but in everything. Uh, you're a good friend. Uh, thank you, Rom. 
for your potatoes. No, really. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you, Rom. Seriously, because you're a great guy. You have a big heart, and you show that you care for others. And uh, whenever you talk to me, and whenever you you, you speak to me, it does uh, feel like it is it is coming from the heart that you have a. Uh, you have a lot of generosity to give, and uh, uh, last but not least, of course, uh, thank you, Silver, for uh, for being so thoughtful as to pay attention to us small guys and uh, hanging out with us on on this tiny little podcast. That, uh, to be fair, not many people know, but then you you make the time to talk with us, and that is such that is so good, and it and it feels so great. So thank you. Uh, for taking time of your day uh, to talk with us because it, it is it is fantastic and outside of uh, outside of the out of this circle of friends that I have here in this podcast uh, thank you to everyone else uh, you guys are great and uh, we want to give a shout out to uh, Sketchy Mecca Beth Hazel anyone on the team uh, Britannia uh, group uh, anyone everyone in team OK. You guys are fantastic. And finally, my friend Nick, who is also great and mm-hmm. cheers me up. So, shout outs to all of them. So, awesome. I got sappy. Awesome. I got sappy. It's cool. It's cool. And, yeah. Ro, what about you? Hi, mom. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know me, man. You know me. I know. It's, just, but it's, the, it's the holiday season. But, okay. Um, hi, Santa. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm broken. Uh, we have so, to <laughs> Silver, what about you? I'd like to thank the members of this academy. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'll give a shout out to all my watchers on DeviantArt and YouTube who have given me motivation to keep going with my videos and uh, to try and push them to be bigger, better, and even more chaotic. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if there ever is a documentary on the MBS show, I want Christopher Walken to play me. The, it'll episode. be the John Delancey. Why? <laughs> this episode, it has continuity. <laughs> uh, the greatest impersonation ever, yes. Yay. And thank no, you guys for having me. No problem, man. We're, we're glad to have you on. It's awesome. And you, Puffy? First of all, I want to thank you all for actually accepting my idea and coming here today. Where, um... A special thanks to Norman for actually making the MBS show because it's the only podcast that I actually follow because every every other podcast actually kind of bores me. I don't know why. <laughs> don't ask. All right. Also, I want to give a shout out to Sketchy and Beth for being awesome because, you know, it's and life. I also want to give a shout out to Daniel Anthony because Daniel Anthony uh, Appreciation Day someday. <laughs> Soon, I will make sure of it. I'll make (laughs) sure of it. I want to give a shout out to Will for also downloading the episodes and not leaving (laughs) me alone. Uh, for from all the people that I know who listen to the MBS show, and I also want to give a shout out to Gamer uh, Razumno, uh, because D Citra, Uh, Norman, you made a mistake. (laughs) I know, you don't have to remind me. Oh, God. Well, anywho, is that all? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so, anywho, uh, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you could contact us at com. And if you want to email us personally, you can... No, links will be in the show notes. So, um, you could also reach us on Twitter. Um, the show's Twitter account is at the MBS show, CityBot will tweet about... Saying holiday wishes and whatnot, and also catch out the Luna Micro on this Christmas Day. Yay! And you also can catch me. I'm at Norman Sanzo. I'll tweet about my experiences with the holidays and sleeping in bed a lot. Yay! Because it's cool. And James, what about you? You know, for a moment I thought, what Norman has turned into a Pokemon, you can catch him. Um, <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Where's my Pokeball? No! The shiny, Get the Master Ball. The shiny Norman Sanzo. <laughs> I have yes. a Pokeball with your name on it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, you guys can can find me on my regular places. Uh, you know, if you want to to get in touch with me, go to askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Is the easiest way to find me there, or or uh, look uh, for me on DeviantArt on uh, jamescork.deviantart.com. 
I barely use my Twitter account anymore. I, I have been plugging it in these past few episodes. And I realized that I, I didn't use Twitter. I'm not a Twitter guy. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's screw that. Uh, you don't need to follow me on Twitter. Yeah, oh, oh. That. Sorry. It's just, I'm not a Twitter guy. Uh, don't feel bad. That doesn't mean you don't have to stop being a Twitter guy if you are. <laughs> but, yeah, you can find me there if you want to get in touch with me. And um, if you need anything, I'm going to be opening for commissions soon. So... Yay. Keep, uh, keep an eye out. I might be able to draw your stuff. Yay. What about you, Rom? You can find me at religiousgalley.tumblr.com and religiousd.deviantart.com. Awesome. And Silver, where can the people find you? Look behind you. <gasps> dun, dun, oh. dun. Oh. Well, let's see. Oh, I'm on... Silver is not behind me. Oh. I would have hugged him. <laughs> I hate you, Norman. I, I I sorry, he's here with me now. I, I can't I can help it. I'm not taking him to eat. And the oh. shipping <laughs> intensifies. Now, I'm on DeviantArt at MLP-Silver-Quill and uh, TGC Silver on YouTube. Uh, all right, all right. I'll put it in the show notes. And Buffy, where can the people find you? Um, Just Google my name and... It- it's Puffy Smosh. If if you dig deep enough, you can uh, start stalking me. <laughs> but that's uh, only for weird people, because I know weird people. Oh, no, no. Uh, so and see. also, I am thinking of starting commissions uh, starting from next year, because, you know, I'm an artist and stuff. Oh. Then we know it's me. <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay, cool, cool. I might commission from you something. So, okay. No. Awesome. <laughs> okay, then. All right. No, then. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been James Cork. I am Rob Old. I am old. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. I'm a silly pony who is a penguin. Uh, uh, that raises happy so ho- many questions. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, happy holiday, guys. Uh, and drink responsibly, have fun responsibly, and take care of yourself, man. Happy holidays. You want to take us out? Group, take us out. Okay, that does it for this episode. If you liked it, punch that like button in the face like a boss. And high fives all around. Thank you. We'll sell you dudes in the next podcast. Happy holidays. Bye bye. And then you say you're not Markiplier. Oh my god. (laughs) I'm Jack's after guy. (laughs) 